person mm -hmm. said, I'm about to have my first baby. How yeah, can me? I prepare for the emotional, mental challenges that are commonly associated with postpartum season that everyone mm -hmm. talks about? Yeah. I would love to know this too. I'm not pregnant, but you know, of course, this is a curiosity of mine. Yeah, totally. Right. And just such wisdom in the question, right? You know, that uh, a wise person sees danger ahead and takes refuge. Right. You know, she's the person goes common. blindly on and suffers the consequences. It's what Proverbs tells us. Right. And so you're like, hey, I have seen people go down this road and it'd be uh, not good. What can I do about that? How do I head that off? So, yeah, it's good. Appreciate the question. <clears throat> With some of the answer can piggyback off of just the the answer to the last question, mm. right? That uh, having a baby, uh, strangely, can be super isolating. Oh, totally. That, you know that initially, a lot of times, if you've got good support network around you on the front end, there's a whole lot of support. Hopefully, right? You got family, parents, mother-in-law sisters, friends that kind of are celebrating with you and come in and in the first few weeks following uh, having the baby, everybody's celebrating and there's lots of hands to kind of pitch in. Uh, and maybe there's some good paternity leave that's allowing a husband to be uh, helpful and engaged. Uh, and then things kind of settle out and all the help kind of disappears. Yeah, I've seen that in, in my friends' lives who, who have had babies um, and just, you know, talking with them three or four months in and they're like, you know, I was really enjoying this at first and now I'm really struggling. Mm -hmm. Totally. That's a normal experience. And really when tend to see a lot of the uh, postpartum stuff really start to set in, right? That there's biological components, so there's a lot of change happening in the body hormonally and post-pregnancy body trying to get back to being, you know, a not pregnant body. So you've got that going on. Uh, the brain needs sleep. Every brain needs sleep. Mommy brains need sleep. Uh, God didn't design the brain to run w without sleep. He could have, interesting enough, right? He's God. But he chose to design our body in such a way that it needs a rhythm of regular sleep, which is like seven to nine hours for most human beings to run optimally. Uh, and so you know, babies don't seem to appreciate uh, mommy's need for sleep. They're more consumed with their own needs for uh, food and closeness and dryness and, and other things. So there's just a lot of different features that are going on. But one of the pieces that you can be very mindful of is I'm going to need people to get through this healthily. You know, that uh, I'm not going to navigate this on the other side in isolation and just be like somehow super mom that doesn't need anybody can do everything on her own and it all work out well. Uh, you're going to need to kind of consistently and regularly, especially over the first like year, uh, kind of build in intentional times to be getting together with other moms and connecting with them. You just need it. You need others that can hold the heaviness of it, the frustration of it, the difficult times, uh, both, uh, you know, the embarrassment, shame, fear that you feel when you're struggling with different things, being a new mom, you're like, I thought this was supposed to be natural and easy. And, you know, I'm a woman, I'm made to be a mom biologically. Why is this so dead gum hard? Um, and why does sometimes I love my baby and sometimes I'm like, ah, it's a plague. Uh, and this is the fear and shame that can be felt around. I'm a bad mom because I'm feeling these things or struggling with these things. That can only get worked through in relationship. It can only be setting with a good friend that can look you in the face and go, been there, done that, get it. This is normal. I can hold this with you. You're going to be okay. It's okay to acknowledge these things. and can just love on you, support you through that. And that the relational support, uh, not just in the first weeks following, but the months, kind of following that is a huge 
component of it. I'd love to know but, how could, you know, someone's spouse support them in that? Yeah, totally. Recognizing that need, you know, is one thing, you know, that part of making that possible or making that able to happen means a spouse stepping in and going, hey, how can I facilitate that? One, how can I encourage you to do that? Two, how can I uh, do my part in uh, creating the space for you to do that? How can we pump and I'll have a bottle and you go hang with a friend and kind of engage and have that, that connection, uh, as well as having just the practical support of being able to create opportunity for afternoon nap and rest not for the baby, for the mom, and that to be able to, to rest and restore and be able to engage, just being able to be a friend. Yeah. And sometimes when we come home, especially guys, and we don't know what to do, I'm like, ah, what do I do with my hands? I don't know how to be helpful kind of in this situation. And maybe what she needs from you, not maybe, part of what she needs from you is for you to just be able to hold the hardness of that with her. Mm. And sometimes to uh, hear your wife kind of sharing how hard something is, kind of feels like bumps into a piece and that's that we're supposed to like be able to rescue the damsel from distress. And if, if she's in distress, then I must be failing at my job. And then we can get all defensive about, you know, that being triggered for us. And so being able to go, no, it's okay, this is hard. And I can just hear it and hold it with her and care about how hard it is. And, uh, and that's okay. And be a friend to her um, can be super helpful. Other things, practical things, diet, exercise, uh, food, all the things that healthy human bodies need in order to be healthy become especially that can important. can be hard to neglect when you have a new baby. Totally easy to neglect yeah. when uh, you know, you've got the demands of new baby, but neglecting those basic things have big implications in terms mm -hmm. of your body having what it needs in order to keep another human being alive and have you be in a healthy place. And sometimes you need some medication, you know, you know, we need drugs, the, the good kind, right? The prescription kind, <laughs> the kind that not just any drugs in that. But uh, sometimes the brain is having difficulty getting in balance. It's not about personal failure. It's not like if you were a stronger human being, you could will your brain's brain chemistry to kind of be differently. Sometimes the brain just has difficulty getting things back in order. And so sometimes it's about the humility of going I'm struggling here. I need to head this thing off and help my brain chemistry get back into normal levels so that I can function like I normally would. And so being on an antidepressant that helps restore brain chemistry uh, to balance for a period of time while you're kind of getting through the body transitions and life transitions, is completely valid. And I'm thankful to God that those things exist. Sure, it's obnoxious. You know, I don't like, you know, when I wore glasses, I didn't like wearing glasses or contacts. It was super annoying. Uh, but, you know, I really do like being able to see clearly. And so I'm thankful to God to have those uh, resources available, even though they're obnoxious and I wish I didn't need them. Same thing with an antidepressant or medication. Sure, we wish, all of us wish we didn't need any help. Uh, but be thankful that they're available and allow that to uh, help you not lose your mind while you're trying to figure out this momming thing. Mm -hmm.